Hello everyone, welcome to the teaching show. Uh, up to this point, we have covered material balance on reactive system and we had seen three methods how to deal with them. One is atomic species balance, other is molecular species balance and the third one is the extent of reaction. I have made separate videos on these three. So if you have not seen already, please check them out. Uh, so in this video, I am going to take one unsolved problem from Felder and solve it three ways in order to show you um, which one is easy, which one is difficult or which method do you want to choose in order to uh, solve any problem. Okay. So um, in this video, what I am going to do is I will take a system in which only one reaction is involved. Then in the upcoming video, I will take a system in which two reactions are involved and then we will compare these methods for multiple reactions. So let's get started and uh, please make sure that you watch this video till end because I keep on telling some basic concepts and some shortcuts in order to solve a problem that might be helpful. So, um, okay, let's get started. So today I'm going to take a problem which is an unsolved in Fender and the problem is 4.4. You can go and see the problem statement uh, if you want to. Okay, but I'm going to describe the problem. The problem is you are reacting um, hydrogen chloride with oxygen to give chlorine plus water. Okay, this is being carried out in a reactor. So I have told you always make a flow chart because it takes it makes your thinking very logical and very systematic okay now uh, let's write down what are the various components which are going in and which are coming out so uh, nothing has been said about uh, the flow rates of these okay so i will start writing one by one i have hydrogen chloride which is going oxygen is supplied as an air so oxygen and nitrogen both of them are going in uh, in the exit stream i will have products which are chlorine then i will have water then uh, nitrogen which is not reacting is coming out of course some of the unreacted components will, not, will also come out so i have these things which are coming out now problem statement tells you three facts first of all oxygen is in 35% excess and then you have fractional conversion of HCl so I am writing F of HCl that is equal to 0 0.85 and it is given that oxygen to nitrogen ratio in air is 21 to 79 so these three things have been given and you have been asked to calculate what will be the product composition okay so, in order to start a problem, your first step should always be to choose a correct basis because the basis, the choice of basis will make the problem uh, difficult or easy. Okay. So, in this case, uh, think what are you going to choose as a basis because oxygen is given as 35% in excess. So, limiting reactant is hydrogen chloride. So, if I choose hydrogen chloride as a basis, then I can calculate what will be O2. Since I know the ratio of oxygen and nitrogen, so I should be able to calculate also N2. So it will be better if I start from this. Okay. So I am choosing now my basis as 100 moles. So I am writing over here my basis I have chosen as 100 moles of HCl. Very good choice. Okay. So now I know this. Fine. Next step, third step was always to calculate your degree of freedom for the problem. Since I am going to compare uh, my atomic species balance, molecular species balance and extent of reaction, uh, all three of these uh, methods. So first of all, what I will do is I will compare, uh, I will calculate degree of freedom for molecular balance and extent of reaction. So usually I combine them together, okay, because they are very simple and they are very quite similar also. So extent of reaction method and your molecular balance method degree of freedom we are going to calculate something like this uh, how many number of independent equations you have so okay sorry first you have to count how many unknown variables you have let's mark what are the unknown variables let's say this is n1 n2 n3 n4 
4, and 5, and 6, and 7. So, uh, number of unknown variables. How many I have? 7. Okay. Then I have to write down how many reactions do I have. So, number of independent reactions. In this case, I have only one reaction. So, 1. Then I will count down how many uh, independent molecular species balance I can write. So, I am going to first count how many uh, reactive species are there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 components are taking part in the reaction. So, I have 4 number of uh, balance on reactive species. See, I could have written um, molecular species balance. I would have got 5 in number. But right now I am writing 4 because I am pulling out inert balance separately. Okay. Then you will write number of inert balance. I am just pulling this out because I will ask you to solve it first. Because inert is not taking part in the reaction. So whatever is going in is coming out. So it is always useful that you solve your inert balance first. Okay. So that's why I am pulling out inert balance and writing it separately. Okay. Then I have number of process specifications. How many do I have? 1, 2 and 3. So I have 3 process specifications. So my degree of freedom is this plus this minus 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 this which comes out to be 0. So, molecular, for molecular balance of our extent of reaction, my degree of freedom is 0. Let's quickly do the same exercise for atomic species balance. How many variables do I have which I don't know? 7. I am not going to count the number of reactions which are there. It doesn't appear in your degree of freedom for atomic species balance. So, I will um, not include that. Then I will have number of atomic species balance, independent atomic species balance. How many species are there? Hydrogen, chlorine, oxygen. Okay. Three of them are there. Right. So, I am going to write uh, three atomic species balance. Then number of inert balances. That is one. Okay. And then how many process specifications I have? Again three. So, my degree of freedom is zero. You want me to write down so I can write Atomic species balance. This is inert balance. And these are process specifications. So, either way, I am getting my degree of freedom as 0. So, now I can use all these three methods one by one and solve this problem. Okay. So, let's get started. Before I start any of the method, what you will see is that process specifications will be used in any of these methods. So, I am first going to use these three process specifications. Okay. It is always advisable that you start from there. Fine. So, uh, let's say uh, first thing which I will use is uh, oxygen which is 35% in excess. Okay. What is the formula for percent excess? That is O2 which is fed minus O2 which is stoichiometric amount divided by the O2 which is stoichiometric amount into 100 and that is given as 35. O2 which is fed I have to find out how much is the stoichiometric requirement. Look over here 4 moles require 1 mole of oxygen. Okay that means 1 fourth of what is the amount of HCl. So if I have 100 moles of HCl I require 25 moles of oxygen in order to completely react with it. So my stoichiometric requirement is 25 moles. So I put the value and that should be equal to 0 0.35. What is O2 fed? That is nothing but N6. So directly this equation will give me N6. If you do the maths, your oxygen requirement will come out to be 33.75 moles. So I have calculated N6. Now I know oxygen to nitrogen ratio is 21 to 79. That means that it is nothing but N6 by N7. So I will use that. So my N7 will be equal to 79 upon 21 into N6. If you do that, this will give you your um, 
nitrogen which is going in with feed is it is approximately equal to 127 moles okay so i have now values of these two i'm going to write it over here 33.75 moles and this is 127 moles i have used two process specifications till now the third one is remaining that is the conversion of hydrogen chloride is 85 percent okay let's use that now so if the conversion is 85 percent that means the fraction which has reacted is 85 percent so the fraction which is not reacted is 1 minus f okay and so that is equal to unreacted upon fed what is the unreacted amount which is coming out in this product stream so this is nothing but n5 what is fed this is nothing but 100 moles okay and this should be equal to 1 minus f that means 1 minus 0.85 or it will be 0 0.15 so directly i get n5 as 15 moles so i have n5 is equal to 15 moles now i have used all those three process specifications so i am going to erase it just to get some space on the board okay now i have used three process specifications next what i am going to use i will use my inert species balance because it's very simple n3 will be equal to n7 so i can directly write over here 127 moles okay so now the common portion of all the three balances is done now let's quickly see one by one each of the method so first i am going to use molecular species balance okay very simple how many species are left i have i have i have used four conditions right now i have to use just three more so first i will take chlorine balance okay so if i take chlorine balance that is one of the molecular species that will be what it is not taking part in the reaction so it is getting generated if i write, put this in general balance equation what will i have there is no input generation of chlorine okay that should be equal to the output what is output that is nothing but n1 what is generation of chlorine okay that we will calculate from the uh, let's see how much hcl is getting consumed okay so how much is uh, chlorine generated let's see for every four moles of hydrogen chloride which are reacting you get two moles of chlorine which are being generated how many moles of hydrogen chloride is reacting let's find out 100 minus 15 so you have 85 moles of hydrogen chloride which are reacting so for for four moles of hydrogen chloride if you get two moles of chlorine so for 85 moles of hydrogen chloride you will get divided by two so my generation of chlorine that will be equal to 85 by 2 that is equal to 42.5 moles so i have got my n1 that is equal to 42.5 moles okay now let's take uh, h2o balance again it is getting generated so it will be generated that is equal to output because there is no input fine and it is not getting consumed that is equal to your n2 again see for every two moles of chlorine two moles of water is generated so uh, for n1 moles of your uh, chlorine which is generated the same amount of oxygen will be generated so i have n2 is equal to 42.5 moles two of the things have been calculated okay now see for every mole of uh, for two moles of chlorine which are generated one mole of oxygen is used okay so uh, for 42.5 moles how much oxygen will be consumed half of it right so if i write oxygen balance i have input that is equal to consumption of O2 plus output that is nothing but what is input it is 33.75 that is equal to consumption consumption of O2 is half of the generation of chlorine so 42.5 divided by 2 I'm just making use of the stoichiometric ratios plus what is the output 
it is not known right now. So N4, if I solve this equation and calculate N4, it comes out to be 12.5. You can do it. See, it comes out to be 12.5 moles. So very simple. You have to just find out the generation and consumption terms using the stoichiometric equation. And then you can solve this problem. Okay, so this was your molecular species balance. Now let's start uh, with your atomic species balance. Okay, so again, how many atomic species do I have? I have three of them, hydrogen, oxygen and chlorine. So one by one, we will take um, these balances. Okay, so instead of now molecular species balance, now I am trying this problem with atomic species balance. Okay, so let's take first hydrogen balance. Okay, input is equal to output because I told you in atomic species balance, atoms are not being created or destroyed. So your balance equation takes a very simple form of input is equal to output. Okay, so input is how many uh, moles of hydrogen atom? 100 moles of hydrogen atom which are going in. How many moles of hydrogen atom are coming out? 2 times N2 over here and uh, over here it is 1 times N5 or that is 15. Okay. So if I solve this, it will directly give me N2 which is equal to 100 minus 15, 85, 85 by 2. So I am getting 42.5 moles. Next I am going to take uh, chlorine balance. How much chlorine is going in? Again it is 100 moles. Okay. Uh, how much is coming out? It is 2 times N1 and plus 1 times N5 or 15. So this again directly gives you, these are the same equations except that it is in N2, it is in N1. So N1 is again 42.5 moles. The same answer which you were getting last time. Okay. So you see these atomic species balances, they are very easy, very simple to use. Okay. Remaining is your oxygen balance. Oh, not O2, but it is oxygen atom balance. Okay, so O balance. Find how much O is going in? That is 33.75 multiplied by 2. That many number of moles of oxygen atom are going in, and that is equal to 1 times N2 plus 2 times N4. Okay, this is what is coming out. N2 I have calculated this is 42.5 so I will replace this this is 42.5 if I solve this equation I get N4 as 12.5 moles the same answer as before but see how simple it is I don't have to bother about consumption generation my reaction is not coming into picture at all okay so whatever it is I am just taking my atomic species balance and I am getting the answer in one step. Okay. So this seems to be a very simple method and I will recommend it to you whenever you have a reaction in a system always try to use atomic species balance. Now the remaining is your extent of reaction method. So for that we will write down our final moles which are formed in terms of extent of reaction. Okay. So what is the form of the equation? N1 that is equal to N10. We are writing for chlorine. What is the stoichiometric uh, coefficient? It is 2 and zeta. Uh, N10 is 0. So I will just erase that. Similarly, I have N2 which is again a product. There is nothing going in. So initial moles is 0 and multiplied by 2 times zeta. So again this is 2 times zeta. N3 I know I am not going to write for that. N4, initial number of moles for N4, oxygen, I know, so it is 33.75. What is its stoichiometric coefficient? Minus 1 times zeta. What is N5? HCl, initial number of moles Ni0, I know it is 100. Minus, okay, what is your um, stoichiometric coefficient? It is minus 4 zeta, right? Now, uh, in order to calculate my zeta, I have to know one of these n values and of course we know n5. 
from one of the process specifications. So I have this value of 15. So I can calculate zeta as 100 minus 15 divided by 4. 100 minus 15 is 8. And if you divide it by 4, it comes out to be 21.25 moles. So I have got the value of the extent of reaction. Now it's very simple. N1 will be equal to 2 times this. So it is 42.5 moles. 2 times zeta again it is 42.5 moles. And this is equal to 33.75 minus 21.25. It comes out to be 12.5 moles. So you observe that when I am using atomic species balance and extent of reaction method, I don't have to really, you know, bother myself about my um, consumption and generation terms and use stoichiometric coefficients and try to find out in what ratios they are getting consumed and reacted. Okay, so the problem becomes very much simpler if you are using atomic species balance and um, extent of reaction method. So uh, rule of thumb over here is that if you have single reaction, Okay, then all three of the methods are equally uh, cumbersome. Okay, they are equally good. Um, but when you have more than one reaction, that we will see in the upcoming video. Okay, uh, when you have two reactions and you have lots of consumption and generation terms, then your molecular species balance becomes very difficult. At that time, atomic species balance and your extent of reaction method, it becomes very simpler to use. So, see you next time and thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thank you so much. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.